I can play any Marvel villain. What should I pick? What should I pick? God! I was nervous. I was excited. Uh, but also... <laughs> Look at you. Which one won? <laughs> guys, guys. This is the best interview of my life. Hi, I'm Chris Evans, and this is my puppy interview. Puppy interview. Where are these puppies? <laughs> Are they just gonna like come running in here? Oh my god. See, I, I have two, my expect, I, I have to chill because like I'm expecting like a waterfall of puppies. <laughs> hi guys, hi, hi, hi booby, hi, hi, hi. Oh my god, you guys are so sweet. Oh. <laughs> hey, how'd that happen? Hi pal. Look at that face. Hi. Oh, God. Who cares? <laughs> uh, if I can play any Marvel villain, what should I pick? What should I pick? Maybe uh, I Loki seems to have the most fun. Come here, guys. Come here. <laughs> Come here. Come over here. Come here. Hi, 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 Buster. Yeah, I did. Of course I did. I loved Toy Story <laughs> when I was younger. Hi, Buster. I love Toy Story, buddy. Oh, man. <laughs> this is a problem. Hi, pal. Hi, guys. Which one won? <laughs> this is impossible. <laughs> Hi, pal. Look at that face. Hi. Hi, Buster. Hi, sweet man. Thank you, pal. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe the first one just because it was the original. Hi, Bubby. Hi, pal. I was nervous. I was intimidated. I was excited, uh, but also... <laughs> Look at you. Guys, guys. <laughs> Come on, go get it. Go get it. <laughs> Oh, man, <laughs> this is terrible. Oh, Bubby. Hi, pal. Hi, pal. Hi, Buster Brown. Oh, my God. You're so sweet. Uh, I guess Rex. Rex would be a good movie, right? Don't you think? That'd be a good one, right? I guess it depends on the movie. Villains are fun. They give you a little bit more chance to play. Hi. Hi, man. Hi, Buster Brown. Hi. Uh, what's the one question I wish I got asked? God, I don't know. I can't think of anything. I mean, what do you think, Buster? What do you think, guy? Hi. 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 Hi, guys. Hi. 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 When I was younger, <laughs> when I was younger, I really wanted to be an animator. <laughs> this is the best interview of my life. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi guys. Hi pal. Look at that face. Look at that face. Hi. God, what's a good song? Maybe Return of the Mac. <laughs> Hmm, to be 48 hours, another Avenger. That's a tough call, because they're all such good friends of mine. Scarlet's my girl, Renner would be trouble, Downey would be a lot of fun, Hemsworth would make me feel bad about myself. I'm not sure. They'd all have some, some, uh, they, they, they it's, 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 a, it's an impossible question to answer. You got a scratch, pal? Come here, let me get it, I got you. Voice acting is, it's daunting because you really only have one string to play on. Um, and, and it takes a minute to realize how, how colorful you can be. Buster, come here, pal. You guys are so tough. You're all flexing. You're showing off. You can't do that. Come here. Hi, Buster Brown. Hi, Buster. Hi. I'm <laughs> about to go home with all these props. <laughs> Uh, 
Well, Perfect Square, we were both so young. Um, and that was back, you know, when you just, you know, it's almost like summer camp. You're just so excited to be doing what you love to do. And it's just, you know, you feel like a little adult going out and having drinks and getting dinners like you're a grown up. By Nanny Diaries, I mean, she was really on her way, so. I don't know, by then it kind of felt like it was exciting. Hi, Buster, come here, look at that mug. You look a little nervous, huh? It's okay, pal. God! Look at this guy. Hi, Buster. Ah. Hi, pal. Look at that face. And yeah, look at you, you little troublemaker. You little troublemaker. I don't know, what is the question? <laughs> I mean, by then she was like, you know, my, my sister. We were so tight at that point. Then it really felt kind of like we were in our adulthood and really working on something really meaningful. Hi, Buster. Look at this mug. That was unbelievable. <laughs> but now we're gonna bring in some older dogs. My dog, Dodger, I, I, I rescued him and he was, though a puppy technically, he was probably two years old at the time. I always thought when I adopted a dog or rescued a dog, it would be a little puppy and Dodger was a full grown dog and it wasn't the story I had in my mind, but it ended up being the best decision of my life. So I just think a lot of adult dogs and older dogs get overlooked and that's a shame. So let's give them some love too. Hey. Hi, it's okay, come here, let's, let's build some trust. Hi pal, it's cool, you all right? These sweet guys, who knows what their story is. I mean, some of them, oh guys, God, it just makes you want to spend time and earn their trust. No better feeling than earning a dog's trust, is there? Yeah, every morning it's play. Hi Buster, hi pal. Oh look, you see, it's so sweet. I mean, they just have such a, such a connection with whoever they've been around for a while and it makes an older dog's love so special. You gotta earn it. No disrespect to the puppies, but you know, these guys have probably seen some things and as a result, they're a little wary. It's why it takes time and I really respect that. You're so sweet, pal. Thanks for trusting me, Bubba. Have I? <laughs> I don't know. Probably Downey, you know. He's seen a lot, been through a lot, and he's so talented. He'd be a fool to not listen. Hi, guy. Hi, guy. You are so sweet. Thanks, bud. Thanks for trusting me. Let's cast Adam Driver, see what he does. <laughs> and who would I cast to play? Scott? God. That's a good question. I don't know. I think only Scott can play Scott. Little shout out to uh, Pacific Pups Rescue for hooking us up with these dogs today. They're all so sweet and they all need homes, so go to a shelter to find your dog. A lot of loving friends waiting for you. Excuse you. <laughs> what a good man. Good job, Bubba. What's up guys? Very exciting day today. I am back with BuzzFeed and I am gonna get to sit down with some puppies and answer some wonderful questions. I'm sure I won't answer any of the questions because I will be so infatuated by these wonderful little puppies. So I'm very excited to be back. The first person to be back. Let's do this. Please bring me puppies. <laughs> Are they gonna bring them all at once? <gasps> Oh no! It's okay. Oh, oh, he smells so good. Hello, hello. Oh, hello. It was amazing. It was incredible. It's a film about exploration, so it made sense to us that we needed to be on practical locations, you know, in Barcelona. Look at that puppy. I wonder what they think is going on. This one is double cute. Head oh, do you want to go play? Go play, go play. What was your question? My favorite stunt in Uncharted. <laughs> Look at these dogs. Stop it, guys. This is beautiful, this little one. You, so you're like me, you're the little one. Hello. I think this one's my favorite. No, no, no. It's okay, I'll protect you. Come up here. Oh, little belly scratch. 
What was your question again? What are we talking about? Favorite stunts. Uh, there's a stunt in the movie. Hello, this is a big one. He's gonna be a big dog. My favorite stunt to film in Uncharted. Arr, arr, arr. Oh no. Careful, careful, careful. I like the stunt where I fall out the back of the plane, I get hit by the car. That was a lot of fun. It was very nerve wracking. My mum came to see me that day. Tickle, 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 tickle. Um, and that was a lot of fun. Oh wow, look, this one is now loving my shoes. These aren't my shoes, I'm borrowing them, so you can do whatever you want to them, mate. Go on, get in there. Get in there. Do you ever get anything done in these interviews? The first scene we filmed was us in the crypt, and it was very fun. I was very excited to meet him. I've been a big fan of his for a long time. Come here, puppy. Uh, and we were good friends, and we had a good time, and you know, it was one of those things where we didn't have to force the chemistry, which was really nice. I love the fact that this dog is chewing on these shoes. Lubitons! Are they tasty, the shoes? Hello, beautiful. My favourite scene to shoot with Sophia is the scene where she knocks me out with the gun because it's one of those things where it really annoys me in films when people play unconscious but you can see them like... Oh! You can see them like catch themselves as they hit the floor. Wow, these dogs are ripping these shoes, man. <laughs> I can't wait to send these back to Christian Louboutin and be like, I'm so sorry. It's quite cute as well, their little teeth can't quite get into it. What would I like to see? I'd like to travel the world some more, you know? Obviously with this film, because of COVID, we weren't able to um, travel everywhere we wanted to go. So it'd be nice to make another movie and, um, and just travel some more, you know? And get to see the world and make a movie and... <sighs> hello, puppy. Oh, hello, puppy. Yeah, that would be fun. This one just wants to go to bed. You can go to sleep and live with us in my apartment. Because you are gonna be our puppy. <laughs> If I could do a lip sync battle, I would choose. I would do a song from Tick Tick Boom and impersonate him. Hello. Oh, I'm gonna lie down with you. Ooh. Not so much a funny story, but um, this dog loves my shoes. Not so much a funny story, but I do remember, um, guys, 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 guys. Just being really, felt, feeling really bad about lying to everyone all the time, because everyone really wanted to know, and I just was constantly lying about the fact that they weren't in the film. Where are you going, mate? This one has stopped nibbling my shoes and started nibbling my ankle. This is a very cute one. He or she? She. She. <laughs> I mean, Downey always answers when I call him. Downey probably would answer. Hello, mate. I'm gonna go in levels of cuteness. This one is pretty cute. Maybe that's what we need, guys, is a team dog. We're about to shoot a TV show here in New York for the next seven months. And maybe what <laughs> we need is a team dog. Are you okay, mate? Relax, bro. No, but I am about to take a puppy home from this uh, interview. No, I've taken loads of props home. I steal props all the time, with permission sometimes. I love that they had nibbling on these shoes. How much are these shoes? 1,800 bucks. <laughs> Get in there, guys. My stylist, Law, is probably having a fit right now. I would be in Euphoria. I think I'd be a really good Maddie. I'm a big Euphoria fan. I love the show and I love season two. I visited a lot while they were shooting it and I really, really enjoyed it. Oh, he's up again. I would love to guest star. Or just be an extra in it. Or maybe I am, you just don't know. Careful, careful, your, your mate is trying to sleep there. I haven't actually. I have a background in tap dancing. I've been tap dancing for years, so a lot of that is gonna be sort of relearning stuff I already know. But I'm very excited. We're very early stages of development, so I still haven't read a script yet, but it's very exciting. But not as exciting as the fact that this dog chose me to come home with me. I would probably just go and walk around town and go and visit all the favorite spots I used to go as a kid and enjoy, which I can't go to anymore. Someone made a bad smell, and it wasn't me. I can't believe how soft they are. You are a little terror, you are. He's like, you're all trying to sleep, get up. I think Arvin Russell would probably be the trickiest one to get along with. Please get in there and get comfy, that would be so cute. No, you're just gonna walk all over him. I think Nathan Drake and Peter Parker would really get along. They're both very adventurous, they like doing the right thing. Hey. <coughs> oh, there's a shoe there, mate. I think for me was when BuzzFeed invited me back for- uh, 
Ow, 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 ow. Careful. Which when they invited me back to do puppies 2.0. We are not gonna be able to give any of these clothes back. There is a hole in my trousers and these are actually my socks. I've got some amazing... That is so cute. How is that comfortable for him on the bottom? No, guys, guys. I'm so sorry. I'll protect you guys. You can go back to sleep. I've had some pretty cool fan art, like loads of really great fan art, which has been a lot of fun. Some of the fans are so talented and they do the amazing stuff and it's really expressionistic and really different. And so I, I, that's the stuff I really like. Ow. You've got sharp little teeth, man. Come and join the cuddle. Come and join this cuddle. Any book, I'd probably have to say the Harry Potter books. Like, to go back and read those again was pretty magical. I'd love to go and re-watch or relive the time I saw Spider-Man 1 for the first time. I was very excited, obviously. It was a big thing for me to be in that movie, and it was life-changing. So the day that I got to go and see that was incredibly exciting. Hello. Hello. What's, what, what are you going through? What are you going through? What's happening here, mate? This is the one for me. And that is definitely... Look at this guy. Yeah, get it, get it, get it. Oh, I know. We're going to put you up here so you're out of the way. There we go. Look, they've all left and there's one final candidate. He likes the taste of my makeup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. I'm Elizabeth Olsen <laughs> and I'm here with BuzzFeed. <laughs> and I'm going to play with puppies. <laughs> There's a lot of trying. <laughs> this is actually harder than I thought. There's um trying to figure out like how much of uh, me do I want to bring and how much do I want to stay true to a character because it's not like I'm playing O.J. Simpson, you know. He's, I'm not playing an iconic character in history. I'm just playing a woman who the story has been told a few times. Um, so I'm just. I think it was a balance of that. I did. There's only one interview or anything that my the woman I played, Candy Montgomery, she only participated in one. <laughs> oh, they're just jumping through the piece of paper and escaping. She only participated in one interview. <laughs> and it was for this book, Evidence of Love. So I used that as my Bible, was this book, because other than that, she chose not to ever do an interview after the trial. And so I received <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. This is so funny. I really just, we had a really fun cast. It was a lot of fun to spend time with each other. So I guess my favorite memories were us trying to kind of getting to know each other when we were filming all the church scenes when we first started shooting. I loved filming in, in Austin. It's a very convenient city to live in, which is important when you relocate for seven months. But we've seen every small town that um, is within an hour's drive outside of uh, Austin. And there's a lot of very cute towns. It just feels like genitals on my ankle. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I think the outfit she chooses to wear when she's going to, that's so cute. They're, they're just teething on my shoe. I think it's one of the oddest outfits that she chose to wear was what she wore to the police station for the first time. She really dressed up and, I, and we never really see her in black in the episode and it's the first time we see her dressed in black to go to the police station and I thought that's kind of odd and funny. My least favorite outfit I can say is the murder outfit because I had to be in it for so long and I got so sick of it. Yeah, I mean, I've had worse blood, you know. I've had a lot of other weird stuff happen to me on camera than that. I'm just always wet and covered in blood and everything I do, I think. Uh-oh, here he goes. That's it. He discovered how to step up on those blocks. Oh, he will never forget it now, and they're all gonna learn at the same time. 
<laughs> it's like watching lemmings. <laughs> They're all just gonna start walking off the cliff. This was a very easy thing to create a playlist for because David E. Kelly had already chosen basically for the most part all of the music and um, I really didn't like disco before. Oh, nailed me! Okay, 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 okay. Now I like disco, that's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, I've taken some things. This, I took a piece of art. We had a really amazing production designer. We had a little bit of a sale at the end of our show, and I, oh, I took a piece of art from one of the Gore's bathrooms. Uh, I think my favorite was us being in Agatha's little dungeon. Catherine and I had to really invent some stuff there and it was a pretty beautiful set. So I think that just me being like hanging on a wire, being tortured by her was my favorite part of that episode. Yeah, I think that, I think the, um, thunder. Oh, see, there's the hole. Ah, we got a good sound now. And now I got your attention. You gonna leave me now? <laughs> Paul. Yes, the magic show. He was fabulous in that, and I just really got to watch him be great. And, you know, be a little showgirl. I liked what I got to wear the Oscars. I felt very, very pretty in that dress. Loved it. I really, I'd never done anything like that before, so it was nice doing it with someone I know and love. I miss playing her, but I thought a lot of the writing was really fun for an actor. I kind of like playing something that doesn't feel like a version of myself, and Lee felt like too much of a version of myself, so I'm kind of okay not saying goodbye to her. My husband was already writing children's books, and we had, ooh, you like the inside of my shirt, I see. You're a boy. Uh, or not, you know, either way. Uh, hey, you, get over here. <laughs> That's how my dad would parent dogs. That's what I learned. <laughs> hey, you, get over here as if everyone speaks English. My husband was writing books and it was during COVID that he and I started collaborating and an editor who liked his writing for a different book asked him to come up with an idea for um, the book about the, that helped children with their anxieties. My husband within like 30 minutes came up with Hattie Harmony because he's, He's got a lot of good ideas. He's like more of the cute writer and I'm more the like facts and uh, structure. So it's really, it's actually pretty easy for us because we complement each other pretty well. And it's, I don't recommend it for everyone. I don't recommend working with your um, significant other, uh, but I, it works out for us. Did you say rap? Oh. <laughs> Who's Wanda gonna rap with? Uh, I guess the new girl I really think is funny, Miss Marvel. Yeah, I think she's very, very cute and endearing and enjoyable. And so I would say her. I watch Succession and I watch SNL and I watch the Dodgers and the Dodger season just started. So that's my current season I'm obsessed with. So I would like to go back and do something where I could be funnier. But it was it was nice to be there. Oh. Get that on camera. My favorite's just having diarrhea everywhere. <laughs> was shocked the moment they told me what it was about. They, I was shocked at the moment they said, you're the villain. <laughs> no one told me <laughs> until right before we shot it. So that was shocking. Hi, you want this? There you go, you wanna join us now? No, but I think my goal was to make sure that nothing seemed like a repeated arc. I try really hard not to make it repetitive because I think that might not be fun for fans. You guys want a pina colada? <laughs> My friend named Charlie Damsky, because for some reason he likes to FaceTime a lot, and he like will FaceTime me at eight in the morning on a Thursday, and I'd never understand why, but he would answer. He's a very talented man, though. He would answer. My husband, not so much. He'd be like, call next time. I'm not FaceTiming you ever. I like 
sketch comedy shows. Oh, we got another one in the same spot. Hey, 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 no. <laughs> Anyone else need a poop? Now's the time. Candy, shockingly enough. I felt like I could do no wrong playing her. Felt very free in my body. David E. Kelly asked me we were at South by Southwest if I missed her, because he knew I did. And I said yes, and we both wish it were a fictional story so we could do a second season. Is it obvious I'm not a dog person? Well, that was me playing with puppies on BuzzFeed. Go watch Love and Death. Hello. Oh, hi. Oh my god, you're precious. You're the most precious thing I've ever seen in my entire Oh my god, there's a two! You have a friend! Hi! Hi! Oh my god! Are you being so good? Are you, are you being so good? This is the best thing ever. Hi, it's Simu Liu, and I'm here with BuzzFeed to answer your questions while playing with puppies, which is crazy. How is that even a thing that you do? Anyway, bring them! Oh my God, I can hear them. I'm so excited. I'm, I'm happy to answer your question in just one sec. Oh, he's going to, okay. Okay, so there's the one scene. This one's name is Minnie. The scene, oh, hello, on the airplane. We were in the airplane and then I was trying to explain to her how to pronounce my name. It was that one and Nora's very funny. We had lots of long takes where we were we were improvising and and it was really great and she's a comedic genius and what's your name? Where do these puppies come from? I have so many questions. My favorite memory working with Michelle is that she loves to dance in between. Oh my god. She loves to like dance in between takes. She's Honestly, such a such a goofball in real life. I feel like she plays a lot of these really like kind of frigid, intimidating characters. And oh hello, oh hello. Just how like fun she is and goofy and warm. So I think that's that was definitely my favorite part of working with her. And and also how much she loves like getting people together for group dinners. Because I know that's something that I love doing too. I would love to interact with Korg from Thor Ragnarok, or like, <laughs> you know, one of the ones that don't get a lot of love. Oh my god, oh my god. A character that doesn't have their own, their own movie. It'd be like adopting, it'd be like adopting a Marvel character. Much like all of these dogs are available for adoption. Are they not? Are they not? Do you come home with me? Oh my God, oh, that's a good question. That's a good question. You know, I was pretty starstruck by Steph Curry. I'm not gonna lie. I did manage to muster up the courage to say hi. I was really starstruck meeting these guys. I definitely didn't have that reaction. Is that a shoelace? Is that a shoelace? It was a crazy, crazy whirlwind, I feel like. Oh my God, I feel like I just didn't get any sleep, but in the best possible way. It was just, it was so incredibly overwhelming, but also really educational. Everyone on that cast is so, like, so incredibly funny. It was like a master class. It was a master class in comedy. It was a master class in comedy, puppy. I forgot the question. I feel like it was, that's my shoelace. That's my shoe, hey you. The first um, movie or TV character that I saw myself, probably like the Yellow Ranger and the original Power Rangers, which, you know, ow, 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 that's my shin and my shoelace. You know, it wasn't, it, it wasn't subtle. It was like the early 90s version of um, diversity. It was like the Yellow Ranger was Asian. It was pretty cool. I remember how that made me feel, it, it, it kind of, just sent a jolt of electricity through me, seeing that for the first time, and um, it kind of means the word. <laughs> That's not a snack. That's my shoe. You're silly. You're silly. It's a tremendous honor just because we didn't have a lot of that representation when I was when I was younger. So to see kids dressing up as Shun Chi for Halloween, being fans, and 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 seeing themselves reflected and 
in in that way, I think is is extremely meaningful, and everyone should have a dog. You're silly. You're silly. I did every stunt that I could have. I, I fought for a lot. I think a lot of producers on our movie were very protective of me, which you know I, I really appreciated. I really wanted to put my best foot forward. I wanted to take ownership over the the, the physicality uh, and, and the movement of the character. And so <laughs> I fought to do as much as I could. I would say at the end, probably like 70, 75% of the stunts. I was kind of like an on again, off again stunt man working in Toronto before then. Um, in addition to acting, and, and I was kind of like a substitute stuntman. That's my shoe! You're so silly! That's my shoe! Look at all these toys! Isn't it funny that dogs always pick the, the one thing that's like not a toy? <laughs> and they just fixate on that. Those are shoes, you silly gooses. You silly goose. I got to take his Jordans. Oh God, oh, ow, oh, oh, oh my God. Oh, those are very teethy. There's a lot of teeth in that kiss. I took some shirts. I didn't take the costume. The costume itself is, it comes in like three pieces. It's actually really, really difficult to, to put on and impossible to do by yourself. So it wouldn't have done me any good to, to take it home. But at some point I'll have the version that's easier to put on. Whoa, 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 guys, guys, play nice. What? That's like asking me which one of these beautiful little creatures I like the most. You can't do that. You love them all equally. They're all equally strong. Isn't that right? Oh, that's still my shoelace though. We cannot give these back. Okay, let me just tie these up real quick. My answer is no answer. I don't think any, oh, oh hello. I can't choose. I think, I think all of them are equally powerful. I will say, Wanda, I think, is the only one that can, like, mess with reality. Maybe she might have a slight edge just because of that. What do you think? What do you think, baby? I am so scratched up all over. But it's okay. Love Island? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's not true. The Bachelor? Also kidding. Maybe Succession, maybe Stranger Things. I would love to play Spider-Man. I used to play Spider-Man at kids' birthday parties, and nobody ever believed that I was Spider-Man, so I feel like, I feel like that'd, be, that'd be a good one. Oh my god, oh my god, so many. Ryan Reynolds, Hugh Jackman, Meryl Streep, Denzel Washington, Michael B. Jordan, Steven Yeun, right? Aren't those good actors? Didn't I choose good actors? My favorite episode of Kim's Convenience is, is when I visit up in the hospital. It's the first time that we've seen each other in such a long time, and we have this like really awesome moment. I remember shooting the scene with Paul Sun Hyun Lee, who plays Uppa, and um, it was just so emotional. It's such an emotional moment for the both of us. Wasn't it a fun show? I really love this place, Fishman Lobster Clubhouse. It's about 30 minutes out of the city. Oh my god, I think she's following us. Oh no, you're still awake. What's going on? What's going on? Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Playtime's getting a little rough over here, guys. You get these massive towers of lobster drizzled in like black bean sauce or like stir fried with ginger scallion. Really, oh, in my opinion, the best way to have lobster. And, um, and there's no restaurant that does it quite like fish. <laughs> guys, ow, ooh, that's a nibble. Ow, 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 ow. Oh, that's a hand. That's a hand, my love. Whoa, man. Uh, One True Loves is is, a, is an amazing novel written by the incredible Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I was lucky enough to play the character of Sam. Was just shooting it, actually. We just wrapped about a week ago in uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. It was just such an incredible experience. I really got to delve into the character of Sam. And what I really love about him is is his kindness. There's a, there's a kindness and a generosity to him that I don't think you see very often in, in romantic leads in movies. I think a lot of times, you know, the male lead is like this really aggressive guy, or he'll he'll make this like grand gesture, and 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 the you know the women are always like, oh my god, you know. But I think what Sam does that nobody else that is really special about him is that he listens. I'm really excited for people to to watch it. 
I remember the, the one thing I did was I slid over the top of the bus, I swung around the side and I, I smashed into the door. But we got that in like a few takes. I would say like the hardest thing for me to do was trying to manipulate the rings and the rings weren't actually there. So I had to like try to, fo imagine trying to focus on points in space that like were just not there. So they're like, okay, the rings are in front of you and now they're moving around. And it's just like weird because your eyes can't focus on something that's not tactile. But somehow, somehow we found a way in the end. We found a way, didn't we guys? My go-to karaoke song is probably Aladdin. It's probably, oh, you want me to, what's, you want me to sing it? You want me to sing it to you? I can show you the world. Oh, shining shimmer rings blended. Tell me princess, that when did you, you're biting my face off. Ouch. We were asked to give a list of our of our go-tos and, and not all of them made it, but but thankfully that one did. My parents make the best dumplings in the world. Period. Ow, no argument. It just it's just true. I've had a lot of dumplings from a lot of different places. And my parents are the best. They have the best ones. My favorite fan story is uh, I was shooting a movie in the Dominican Republic. I met one of the dog extras that were on set and then I fell in love and then I took her home with me. I took her home like someone's gonna take you home. It's true. Probably Superman. I just love the idea that he was kind of like an immigrant in a way. Like even though he was he was living among among humans, like he wasn't really from there, and he was constantly having to, you know, in some ways hide who he really was. I just I, I think I related to that. Oh my God, this has been absolute torture. No, it hasn't. This is the best. Ah, <sighs> hello, I'm Brie Larson, and I will be answering fan questions while playing with puppies. <laughs> hello, baby. Hi! Wait, more? <laughs> I get two? Three? Get four. Four? Oh my gosh. No way. Come on, join the party, baby. Wanna sit in my lap? Hi, little angels. Oh, come back here, baby. Uh, I did have hesitations because I was, uh, I didn't know that I would do interviews with puppies. I didn't know that was part of the contract. I thought that, uh, <laughs> I was actually scared of this part of the process. The idea of like my face being places and dealing with the sort of like fame stuff was not a, super appealing to me because I uh, am an introvert. So I needed to take a little bit of time to see if I could kind of handle the leadership position of this part. But I didn't have any issue with, you know, the character, the movie or what they were trying to do with it. In fact, I was really excited about it, which is why it was kind of a difficult decision, but um, I'm really glad I did it, and it feels like a, like a giant win for introverts everywhere. It was just a very simple moment. I was in a wardrobe fitting, and I didn't even know it was happening. I had tried on various pieces of the costume, and you kind of do like a fitting for the boots, a fitting for the pants, a fitting for the top, a fitting for the helmet. And so I didn't, I didn't know that I was finally gonna put it all on for the first time. And it takes like a couple people to put it all on. And I was talking and wasn't paying attention. And suddenly I looked in the mirror and was like, oh my gosh, it looks like a Disneyland character. And then I just was like really concerned about going to the bathroom. I'm also like a woman, so I'm, I have a menstruation. And that was also scary to me. I was like, what do I do? <laughs> How do superheroes do this? But they were super awesome and had tons of extra, you know, zippers and ways that I could get out of it. it still takes like 30 minutes to get out of it to go to the bathroom, but it's fine. It impacted me in that it made me, from the very beginning, I mean, just deciding to take on the role meant that I was going outside of my comfort zone and gonna push myself to do things that were, mm, I don't know, things that I never thought that I could do, whether it was deadlifting or learning martial arts, things like that. And those were all very new for me. I don't know, I have no expectations. How it impacts people, you know, I don't really, I don't really know. I don't really feel like it's up to me. Oh, you came back, you came back to me. Why is that so satisfying? I feel like accepted and understood and seen. Oh, that's an expensive shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm, 
Hmm, there's a couple things for different reasons that were intense. The, there's a ropes course scene in the movie and we did that 50 feet up in the air on wires. Um, I had to learn how to do these like kind of like flip around wire kick things. That was pretty cool and new. And also like the the thing, I think it's like in the trailer, I think people have seen it now, where I'm hanging on the side of a train and I sort of pull myself up and go into a shoulder roll and then blast. Oh, also the in the mind frack sequence when I'm hanging upside down, so I'm hanging uh, by my ankles and I have to you know, use my abs to lift myself up, break the restraints and then flip around and land. That took like, you know, a solid weekend to learn how to get right. Uh, I really am into butterfly clips. I also keep thinking about hit clips. I don't know if anybody else remembers those, but they were like 60 second, like little microchips that you could buy at McDonald's that played like uh, NSYNC and Backstreet Boys. I don't know why I so badly want those to come back because they're really not practical, but I like it. A real life role model is my mom, for sure. And then, like, I loved the Spice Girls. I loved Sailor Moon. I'd like come home from school just to try to not miss a second of Sailor Moon. I did read Wonder Woman comics growing up, so maybe some of that. Yeah. I think. I mean, the Floaton Blasts are super cool, but. The more I think about it, the more I feel like flying is probably like the most practical application I could use for my life. Yeah, I mean, I don't even need to cut it for a movie. I would, I've had my hair that short before. I kind of been thinking about doing it to be honest just because it's less work. I feel like at this point in my life, I'm probably the most like Carol than anything, but it's also just because like, she's such an empowering role, whereas I feel like most of the things I did before were more dramatic. And so when those movies were done, I was like, I can kind of leave that experience behind. But after playing Carol for close to a year, basically, once it was all said and done, I, I just, I dig her vibe. And I feel like a lot of the way that she views the world and in particular how she owns and views herself, I think is, is empowering and helpful to me. I've just decided to be a little bit more like her. I can tell you nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Uh, so this was me doing an interview while playing with puppies and I wish it would never end. Hi, I'm Benedict Cumberbatch. I'm here at BuzzFeed and I'm here to play with puppies and to answer your questions. <laughs> I'm excited, I'm excited to meet the pups. Bring in the pups. <laughs> Big puppy, what are you doing in here? What a strange environment to be. What's that noise? What was that noise? Okay, okay. What's in the jar? What's in the jar? What's this? What's this? What's this? It's a question. What's the best and worst thing about playing Doctor Strange? Um, the best thing is, yeah, you eat that question. Eat it up. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of best things about it. Best thing is probably having a cloak that means I can fly, which means I get to do wire work, which when it's done right and not for too long in a harness is incredibly good fun. Some of the stunts are really good fun to do, the training and all of that I really enjoy. It's, it's a big old workout. Yes, it is. The worst thing is, I don't know, it's a really gifted gig. I'm very lucky. If I'm to moan about something, what would it be? Maybe, maybe the cloak again. The cloak is quite cumbersome. No pun intended. Hello. Um, yeah, it can be quite a sort of awkward thing to work with. Cooking jar. No, I'm joking. It's just, it's, it's questionless. I'm so sorry. Do you still know how to play the violin? If so, which do I still know? I never knew how to play the violin. Next question. It was all fakery and really embarrassing. You know, this is something that takes years of practice from the age of three, and then I'm supposed to sort of turn it around in a couple of months before doing a bit of Sherlock. Not good, my friends. I could pretend to be a lot of things uh, with some degree of authenticity, but that is something well beyond me. Uh, who's the first real friend you made in Hollywood? And do you two still speak? I don't know, I mean, Gary Oldman, I guess. Yeah, we still speak. First time I went to Hollywood, I did Star Trek, and I don't speak to them nearly. I mean, Zoe I see more of, obviously, because of the Marvel thing, but I, he, Chris I adore, and, and I, you know, and Zachary as well. Yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it was a, it is a great family. It was a great family to be part of for a little while there. Um, and Darling Anton as well. Um, who I wish I could still speak to, very sad. Don't eat my questions before I've read them. It's like having naked flames in the room, this is wonderful. How hard was it to jump back into your normal life after playing a role like Patrick Murrows? 
Good question. Um, difficult. I abstracted myself from my normal life for a little while, especially when I went to the dark zone of um, cocaine and heroin abuse and trashing hotel rooms in the New York episode. Just didn't really want to go home with any of that swelling around my brain and body. I mean, not literally, but just psychically and uh, well, and physically, because you just have to pretend and put yourself down. It just you need some space. But most of the time, I, I switch on and off pretty easily. Which app on your phone do you use the most? Probably Waze. Hey, go easy, you may be bigger. But that's not playing fair. Stop it, stop it. Yeah, pick up some of your own size. No, 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 no. If you could do a film adaptation of any TV show you loved as a child, what would it, which one would it be? Why would I want to do a film of something that worked well in, in its time as a TV series? I mean, don't get me wrong, that happens a lot, but I'm, that's not really, that's not my gig. I don't, I'm not too fond of that stuff. Are you ever going to join Instagram or Twitter? Denada. No. Absolutely not. Who are your all-time favorite musicians? Which present artist are you listening to nowadays? I don't have an all-time favorite. I mean, Bowie, The Stones, The Ramones, Sex Pistols, Clash, Who, Pink Floyd. Who am I listening to at the moment? Well, Elbow's new album, it's great. Moonshape Pool gets a lot of play, Radiohead. Um, I love Tom's new album as well. It's a very good film he did with Paul Thomas Anderson. I think so serious about well, your relative choose my boot. Describe a puffy day. Hello. <laughs> this is a puffy day, isn't it? Getting my ear licked by a puppy. Yeah, this is pretty perfect. This is great. But I mean, the rest of perfect with me would be private, so I won't describe it. Um, Work-wise, though, a perfect day is, I, I don't know, I love my job. Pretty much every day is a good one. Perfect day is when I've had eight hours sleep. That's a perfect day. What are some of your pet peeves? Oh, God, but people sound so grouchy when they answer these questions. I don't know. People leaning on the horn thinking it's going to make traffic move faster. People being trapped in their bubble, you know. People being trapped in their bubble, full stop. Um, mobile phone usage, negative impact of some of social media. I mean, I could go on. I'm an old fogey now. 43, it's efficient. Good question. I really could go on. So I will. Dirty tricks, demagoguery, uh, fake news. Everyone's a critic and angry, but they don't necessarily have any kind of nuance. They just want to shoot the messenger sometimes, not the message. The fact that we're in a crisis, people, a climate crisis, these little puppy dogs. Save the puppies, if not yourselves. Stop using single-use plastic. Try and stop digging carbon fuels out of the ground. Please, leave the fossil fuels alone for these puppies. It's a dangerous question to give me. Yeah, can I have another pet peeve? Yeah, burning rainforests. What the f is wrong with the world? Uh, what was it like babysitting Tom Holland during your MCU press tour? Difficult, like I said, I had to teach the kid how to shave, how to brush his teeth, the fact that you have to do it both day and night. Um, you know, personal hygiene is a bit of an issue with teenagers, and Tom's no exception to that rule. Uh, so, you know, I fumigate get the rooms, I get out, you know, the kind of, yeah, it was, it was tricky. Um, but, you know, he's, no, in all instances, he's a gentleman, brilliant, wise, beyond his years. Uh, tolerant of me and a dear friend. I love working with him and bring on the next project. Goodbye.